you mean? What? We're gonna break up? No. Us? Are you joking me? What are you talking about? What do you mean you don't love me anymore? I love you still. You can't not love somebody. You can't stop loving. It's in your heart. You either got it or you don't. Don't you remember? He is known as an aspiring actor, a musician, a fitness guru, a comedian, and at one point, the smallest man in Canada. He is a renaissance man, a man who survived alcoholism, a man named Jake Johnston, who runs a variety channel where he displays his various talents and aspects of his life, called Jake Showcase. Jake Johnston was born on July 26, 1977, in London, Ontario. His family is of German, Irish, and Scottish descent. He was the oldest child in a family of nine, which consisted of five sisters, a brother, two parents, and then Jake himself. Jake often made videos where he would reflect on his past during his childhood and teenage years, where he would go into depth about his family dating life, and often be open about his former alcohol abuse, which was something he got into quite early in his life. Somewhere between the ages of 5 and 7, Jake would notice that when his family had gotten together for family gatherings, they would typically be quiet and tense, until the beer, wine, and hard liquor came out. He got the notion that the good times would occur when he'd watch them consume alcohol and begin to laugh and dance around. He'd see this happen time and time again. When Jake was seven, he had his Holy Communion, which was the time he decided he'd give alcohol a try for the first time by drinking an excess amount of wine that would be lying around during his communion party. He'd consume enough to the point where he'd gotten drunk. This would be a point in time where misfortune would start to find its way into Jake's life and hinder him to this day. Although this is something I'll get into later on. Jake Showcase to do videos on Wednesdays. Hi everybody, welcome to Jake Showcase to do videos on Wednesdays. Hi everybody, welcome to Jake Showcase to do videos on Wednesdays. Jake created his channel back on July 7th, 2012. He uploads his first video on the same day, titled 100 Most Beautiful Men in the World, where he would Google results for the most handsome men in the world and examine them thoroughly to figure out what common qualities they all shared that might contribute to their high level of attraction, such as the hairstyle, or how fit they were. So, what I did here is uh, I go on to Google and uh, typed in 100 most beautiful men, and then the fifth one down here was this. This fifth one was the first one, uh, 
last year and uh, just to find out like okay so what is attraction what is attractive considered attractive and what can I do uh, for myself to make myself more attractive and uh, as you can see here through this list uh, there's a bunch of uh, wide diversity here of different looks now uh, some of these guys are you know have like long hair like this guy and some a lot of them have short hair like this guy and uh, you know just taking a look here you know what's similar the only thing I could actually see that might be similar is uh, that they're all in shape now not not in shape like uh, you know everybody's got to have six packs which is what I thought but when I counted here there's only seven of these guys seven out of the top hundred most beautiful men actually you know have six packs uh, the fact that they're dressed sort of indicates that they probably don't want to show that off for a moment he tells viewers how he looked up to these men as inspiration and how he'd view them in order to make adjustments to his own physical appearance in order to help his confidence and his ability to stand out to women. Inspirational for me to sort of uh, make some adjustments. Uh, there was a time in my life uh, uh, that I not you know that I was really searching for answers and you know I, I, I really didn't know which way to go to you know have you know w w what I was doing wrong. I you know was uh, very very alone and very very you know hard to find so I wanted to make myself more attractive you know I you know I want uh, I like women and I I, I I didn't have any any women so he later tells us that there are just some things we are unable to change about ourselves and that we have to work with what we have that just is what you know you have what you have I'm a, I'm a short guy I'm only uh, I'm only five foot uh, I'm only five foot five or five foot six so that's a real disadvantage you know because like you know women like uh, guys that are much taller you know it's, it's actually you know one of the first things that they look for so you know you have to you have to work with what you have right the following couple of videos after this would follow a sort of trend regarding self-improvement for men and how you can be a better version of yourself these videos would include tips on how to quit drinking alcohol how to become more attractive to women, how to count calories in order to achieve the body of your dreams, and a handful of workout videos where Jake demonstrates to us his workout routine. The majority of these workouts are done in improper ways where Jake would either not have correct form or fail to go through with the full range of motion. The comments in these videos would range from viewers either rooting Jake on and being in full support of him or completely bashing him and his attempt to share his exercises with us, and everything in between, where some people would give constructive criticism on how he can do better. Alongside these, he puts up other help videos, with guidance on things involving tips on how to start using computers for elderly people, and how to apply for a job online. Jake begins to get a little more personal with his fan base rather quickly. He releases a video titled My Remarkable Life, an inspirational video. In this video, he describes his birth being very complicated and how he was born much smaller than the average person. He'd have trouble eating and things were looking as though he could have died as an infant. He was also born of coloboma, a condition of the eye where the iris has a hole in it that gives the pupil a keyhole sort of shape. Later on in his early life, around the age of 12, doctors put Jake on testosterone and human growth hormone due to the fact that he wasn't showing any signs of significant growth. He took injections every day for 5 years from the age of 12 to 17. He goes on to explain his experience with these growth hormones and eventually begins to go into details about his college life dual citizenship, and beginning struggles with drinking. When I was born, I was, uh, there was a lot of labor problems uh, that, we, uh, that my mother had, and I was born uh, very, very small. Right from the get-go, you know, there was a lot of uh, concern and worry about me. Um, I had a, a very difficult time eating, and several times it looks like I was going to die. That small growth uh, didn't just happen with the growth. I also was born with what's called the coloboma, which is uh, only one in three million people have it, which means my iris is bigger than the other one, uh, causing sort of a little bit of a slant in the eye. 
So I was uh, quite quite small compared to uh, everybody else. Um, unusually small. So, so small, in fact, that uh, doctors from uh, some of the best doctors in the country, and I believe international doctors, looked at my case as extremely special and unusual. When I was 12 years old, uh, the doctors decided to uh, give me uh, testosterone and human growth hormone as a special growth, uh, as a special growth formula to try to spur on puberty. Um, I was given uh, HGH uh, from from the age of, I believe, uh, 12 years old through to about 17 years old. So for about five years, uh, I would inject myself every day. Uh, with a needle of human growth hormone. Nonetheless, I really wanted to be bigger. Um, had a very difficult time socializing with uh, kids my age. Uh, it was much too small to play any sports and I uh, had uh, no success with uh, girls. Um, it was it was quite, quite difficult. Um, I got several pictures where I'm actually smaller than my brothers and sisters, even though I'm the oldest of seven. Uh, I've got five sisters and a brother and uh, my two parents. So because I was having such social difficulties, uh, you know, I, I had very few friends and uh, would get pushed around a lot, get bullied and uh, get made fun of. It was very difficult. Uh, I took to the school and I started doing remarkably well, uh, scoring very high on, on uh, you know, in academics. And I basically took that sort of as my calling card uh, throughout high school. And, uh, and ended up winning uh, several of the different uh, academic awards uh, in my local high school and winning a scholarship uh, into the uh, university. Um, and I was given a, was given a pre-acceptance into the top university in Canada uh, called the Ivy Business School as long as I maintained uh, certain grades for the first two years. So when I returned back to uh, college, I, uh, I found the drink and uh, and me and the drink got along great. Um, it was the beginning of a long, long relationship with it. And uh, basically, for on and off for the, the next 10 or 15 years, I would uh, I'd be drinking. Uh, so I basically, uh, I uh, got kicked out of school because of drinking. I ended up going back and getting kicked out. I've had um, much difficulty. I got uh, rusted for uh, being disorderly. Uh, I, um, I had to go to the rehab, uh, five different rehabs in fact, so I've been in and out of the rehabs and uh, gone to all the uh, AA and all that and I went to, uh, and nothing seemed, you know, I went to the counselors and the psychiatrists and you name it, I went to it and, uh, you know, I'd always find my way back, you know, believe in that, you know, you always go back, you always go back to the thing you love the most, which was, uh, for me, drinking for sure. On July 12th, 2012, Jake posts his first comedy skit video titled Fat Guy Jake, Working Out With Success, where he attempts comedy with a sort of inspirational twist added to it. He plays a gluttonous version of himself, which he calls Fat Jake, and throughout the video would have a dialogue with himself speaking as Fat Jake and Motivational Jake. I just can't figure it out, don't know why, don't know why. Don't. Hey Jake, you can work out. You can put, you can uh, work out and get in shape. No, not me. I can't get in shape. I'm too big and fat and I don't want it. I can't do nothing. I don't like any of that. Oh, come on. No, you can do it. You can do it. Just put the chips down. There's a workout bar right behind you. What? Oh, I can't do any of that stuff. No, no, no. Just put the chips down. Come on, put the chips down. Oh, 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 oh. A few days later, on July 15th, a little over one week after the creation of his channel, Jake makes his first blog post on blogspot.com. Here, he writes to us that the channel has started up and that he really enjoys creating content on it. Although he says that the blog would primarily be used to promote his channel and be a place where he can share his thoughts that he experienced during the creation process of his videos, his following post would go a bit more into his personal life. He writes about making plans with a lady friend 
and how he went to Old Navy to buy all of the size 6 and 7 black and white crew neck shirts in the boys section, since everything from the men's section could not fit him. He bought these with a the thought in mind that he would continue going for a James Dean look, which is somebody who Jake draws heavy inspiration from in terms of physical appearance. He gets close to the look, albeit looking more like a punished version of James Dean. The comedy content would be a common thing for Jake to indulge in, alongside his motivational and self-help content. He would continue posting fat Jake skits, as well as skits involving other characters, such as a salesman who tries to sell you used, worthless items, or a variety of different bizarre people that he would come up with as he improvised with what little props he had to further add layers to his characters. Although it's not so obvious at first, I couldn't help but notice that many of these skits would possibly be inspired by tragedies going on in Jake's personal life, whether it had to do with his financial situations or poking fun at his own mental state of mind. This is another thing I'd like to touch upon later on, when more information regarding Jake is established. Jake would take a month break away from these comedy videos, as he describes in a blog post from July 28, 2012, that he was having a dry spell and couldn't figure out any proper ideas for a comedy sketch, and was beginning to lean more on doing serious videos. On August 28, 2012, Jake posts a video titled, Welcome to Jake's Showcase, Purpose and Introduction, Enjoy, where he lays out quick details about what his channel covers and his purpose of making these videos. Hi everybody, my name's Jake Johnson and welcome to my YouTube channel named Jake's Showcase. The purpose of this channel is that I like to get discovered. I like to either work in the entertainment industry, be a motivational speaker, or possibly work in with an educational institution. I'm gonna present a whole variety of videos here that are gonna be spanning from life stuff, to health stuff, to how-to stuff, to funny stuff. You know, it's gonna be a wide range of stuff so you can see what I got. The blog posts up to this point are nothing of any real interest. Mostly some updates about specific channel stat milestones like total view count, He states in one post on August 8th that he has a goal of 1 million views by September 27th, only one and a half month later. He seems to be confident with the realism of this goal and thinks he could probably reach it if he were to do some heavy advertising. His total views as of this time are only at 3,000, which is 997,000 views shy of his goal. Jake often combined his love for acting and comedy together to make skits, but he also took a liking to the drama and more serious roles that he would create. Well, I can't help it. I can't help but be upset and angry. I've been loving you forever, forever. We gotta try. Listen, I apologize for anything I had done to you incorrectly. I didn't mean to. Why? What good is life if you don't have love? What good is it? I need more. I need more. I need more. And it's gone. It's gone. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm not taking it. I'm gonna win it back, forever. And that, I know, for sure. It's just because I love you so much, that's all. Can't we give it another try? I love you, baby. Throughout the existence of his channel, Jake posts many videos going over how to quit alcohol or drugs, 
and describes his own experiences of alcohol, and he gives explanations about negative things that were occurring in his life during the time that he was facing problems with alcoholism. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jake Johnston. This is Jake's Showcase. I do videos on Wednesdays. Today's date is March the 7th, 2015, and today marks the fifth continuous year of my sobriety. Um, in the sixth grade, we, we would go down to uh, Philadelphia uh, every summer, uh, our family. My mom w would go down to Philadelphia, that's where she, she was from. And, uh, you know, b basically we would spend our summers there and we'd spend our winters in Canada, where, where I'm located now, uh, in London. And b basically, um, when, when I would go down there, the, the, the kids down there were much more receptive to me and I was more part of the social uh, crowd. And then around the sixth grade, you know, there was sort of the same sort of experimenting that I had done maybe, you know, seven or eight years earlier with sipping beers and wines, maybe stealing a beer and bringing it out to the field and drinking it together. And, you know, I loved it, you know, I mean, it was, we were being bad, we were being like rebellious, we were being, you know, things we weren't supposed to do, hiding it, right? And, you know, this progressed as the years went by where when I would go down to the States, that's where I would get a chance to sort of, you know, drink with friends. And I loved it, right? So I felt like I had friends and the beer made me feel good, made me, always made me feel extremely warm and very, very, I laugh a lot and, you know, and as I moved into high school and stuff like that, a lot of times I would, I would take uh, cups of wine and then I would refill it with water to make it look like, to make it look like it hadn't been touched but I might drink half a bottle of a large bottle of wine and I get hammered, right? We were, we were poor, so it was always a hard time uh, for me to obtain, you know, enough money and I would, I would have a lot of part-time jobs, um, you know, and I remember in, in, in high school I would work at a movie theater and uh, always one night a week, you know, either on a Friday night or on a Saturday night, I would dedicate that I was going to go out you know, and get, get drunk. Basically, I was able to hang on to some sort of sense of normality, and I would get scolded when I would get caught drinking at some of like, these Christmas parties from, from my parents, or, uh, you know, you know, where's the wine? And, you know, it would be sort of a confrontational thing, but I was still living at home, and I was still, you know, uh, keeping the grades good enough, and I was still hanging in there. And basically, when I was drinking, I was gregarious and happy, and basically I was able to have groups of friends, and I was able to join in, and the, the dorm liked me, and because it was kind of, I was kind of a freak, because I was like this smart guy, but then I was this little guy, and then I was like this big, huge drinker, and kind of, kind of like funny, because it was like, like people couldn't believe how much I could drink, and I would party every night, I would be, I loved it, I wanted to go out, be blacking out, be passing out in the dorm rooms. I was getting in trouble by the RAs, and uh, you know, um, you know, I would stop going to class, right? Or I, and, and the teachers didn't understand what was going on because I was like this A student. I went down to like an F student, right? But I was determined to get out there and party. I remember being at this one uh, at this one house party. You know, I ended up uh, waking up and you know totally. You know, butt naked on a on a, on a couch, and uh, you know, one problem I used to have, or I did have, was is I used to uh, pee myself, right? Like you know, I'd be drinking a lot, and I'd end up peeing myself. It, it, it was it was pretty pretty regular. I, it was real small, and you know, I'd be drinking all night, and my bladder just couldn't hold it, and so it was really embarrassing because I'd be like this, uh, you know, twenty, this guy in his twenties. Who's, who's wetting himself because of his drinking. He also brings up that, although he's been sober for a while now, he was unsure of whether or not he'd end up drinking again. I still want to drink now, right? And I think I'll always want to drink, like always desire to drink, right? But I don't know if I'll ever drink again. I could turn his camera off and I could start drinking right now, right? I don't know exactly. I'll always want to drink, but the key is, is that I'm not drinking and I, you know, I'm hoping not, you know, I, I like doing it this way, right? He goes over what defines alcoholism as written by the American Psychiatric Association Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 4 
and the criteria one must meet to be considered an alcoholic. Number one, tolerance as defined by either of the following. A, uh, a need for a markedly increase in the amounts of alcohol to achieve intoxication or desired effect. Uh, or, or B, markedly diminished effect with continued use of the same amount of alcohol. In most of these videos, he shares a variety of stories and experiences that he's had with rehab and the steps he took to pull himself away from the alcoholic lifestyle. As I mentioned earlier, Jake seems to use comedy as a way to exhibit tragedies that have occurred in his life due to the heavy use of alcohol, or just poor choices that he's made in general. This is most apparent on his video titled, How to Mess Up Your Life Massively, 10 Easy Steps How to Mess Up Your Life, a comedy video where he names off a list of things that would potentially ruin someone's life. Hi everybody, it's Jake Johnson here from Jake Showcase. Today, I'm going to show you the 10 easy steps of how you can massively screw up your life. This was one of his earlier uploads, and at first, it would seem like nothing significant. But as the years go on, and we learn more about Jake, it's quickly obvious that these are all things that have occurred in Jake's past. Now step number one, you have to drink so much that you lose your scholarship and get kicked out of school. So I ended up getting kicked out of school and losing my scholarship in that pre- uh, business school plan that, you know, I had. Step number three, get kicked out of your parents' house. So basically my drinking escalated and, and it continued to escalate where I ended up getting kicked out of my parents' house. Step number four, progress for two and a half years at a large bank, work your way up and then get fired. And um, I thought instead of stockbroker terms, I wanted to be in banking. But it didn't seem to matter where I went, uh, the drink would come with me and I loved that so much. Heineken was my, uh, my final choice there. Step number five, get a job at an Ivy League university and then get fired. Uh, I ended up uh, bouncing a little bit back and forth, I ended up in a great university job. I drank my way out of that. That lasted about four months, I was in this high level uni uh, Pennsylvania university. Uh, step number six get arrested, charged, and jailed. Um, much difficulty, I got uh, arrested for uh, being disorderly. Step number eight, start a massive accidental fire in your apartment and then fall asleep in your apartment. Uh, ended up with a real difficult situation, ended up getting in a house fire in fact, and it was remarkable once again that I, I survived that. I, I, I passed out in my apartment and uh, the house was on fire and I didn't know and the fire department saved me and, uh, you know, so. Another sketch video where this was very obvious is one where Jake plays an exaggerated version of himself and his therapist having a therapy session together. The therapist would ask a series of questions and Jake's other character would reply to them with responses that sound identical to things that have happened to him. And do you ever feel crazy? Doc, you're in for a treat with me. That's, I'm the craziest guy in old town. Do you think you're crazy? Crazy? Me? I'm totally crazy, man. That's all I do. I'm a number one crazy man. Do you have any sexually repressed feelings? You're asking me if I got repressed sexual feelings? Oh, yeah, I got lots of that. And women. Tell me about women. Do you have women issues? Women's issues? Me? Women's issues. Are you joking me? I got tons of women's issues. I got so many issues with the women's, it's, it's as many as your tissues you got. Come on, bro. I got books and books and books on women's issues. Do you use any drink or drug to alleviate your pains? Bozen? Me? Oh, I love booze. Booze, booze, booze. But you know what? No more drinking for me. No. I got that monkey off my back. After a second to last video regarding alcohol is posted, things get peculiar. He posts a video explaining why all math is wrong. The gist of this video is that, according to Jake, the concept of what an equal sign really means is flawed, and that although two things may appear identical, they somehow can't be put together as one in one because of many trivial factors that make them unique from one another such as temperature, lighting, and minor physical differences. It's a take on mathematics that comes off as rather ridiculous. 
We're going to go through a series of examples of what the problem is with mathematics all together. And I'm going to show you, and you're just going to have to pay attention to each one of the different show, the slides that I show you to sort of get the idea of what the problem is. Okay, at the most elemental level of math, we basically have our sort of our basic equation, right? So all math is essentially a, a derived sort of off of things equaling each other. And the problem is exactly just this. It's that the equal symbol. You see, the equal symbol basically means that if you put one and one together, you're going to get two, right? And if you, you know, and, and henceforth. But the problem is that the equal symbol is in fact flawed. So what do you mean that the equal symbol is actually flawed? Well, you see, the thing is, is that when you're adding one and one, you know, it, and equaling it to two, right, you're basically saying that each of the things in itself are in fact the same. But the problem is, is that there is no actual two things that are the same. And I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to start off right here. This here is two blades of grass. I, I picked them out of the yard. And, and so as you can see here, if you were going to add this in math, it would be 1 plus 1 equals 2. But it doesn't take much sort of reason to take a look and to see that this one is very different than this one. Right? So, like, you know, you got a, a large difference within the same thing. So, uniform. Let's say, for example, these two cups of coffee. So, these two cups of coffee are exactly, uh, you know, like they're the same, but they're, they're really not the same. And the reason that they're not the same, even though they might have similar features, is because they're actually in two different places on the same on, on this on this floorboard and to top it off they're being struck by the light right at different angles right another thing he posts is a video where he explains why he doesn't go to toronto where he makes it almost two hours into the trip and is just on the outskirts of the city until he loses his patience and takes the nearest exit on the freeway to head back home to london completely wasting his time and money on traveling and gasoline. He manages to fit in one last workout video as well. He also posts one last video regarding his sobriety of seven years. On May 23rd, 2017, Jake posts his final video titled, What Food I Eat When I'm Broke. Jake starts the video off telling us that he doesn't have a lot of money, and he comes off as depressed and beaten down by life. A major change in mood and energy compared to the majority of his previous videos, where he's typically energetic and full of life. He goes through the typical day of his life, and puts emphasis on the cost of things that he uses throughout the day. He sticks to buying simple, cheap, non-nutritious foods such as bread and Oreos, but still insist on paying a larger sum of money on unnecessary things like cigarettes. Okay, so my first purchase, or my second purchase, is I got uh, two packs of smokes and a lighter. Uh, I uh, found a good deal on cigarettes today, so I decided to get two packs, and uh, my lighter was out of fluid, so, so that cost about $25 today uh, on that. All right, so that's uh, the next thing. Need your smokes. <laughs> So you see, you might wonder why would I spend all that money on uh, cigarettes? But the truth is, is that I have sort of a philosophy that you take care of today. Although the comments are disabled on his last two videos, his last guitar video is the last gathering of a place for Jake's fan base to come together and comment. Many of the comments ask of Jake and where he's been at. Many speculate different things. Some say he has gone homeless, got bored of making videos, or has died. Although it is uncertain as to what happened to Jake, it's highly likely that he moved back in with his parents on the condition that he stopped making videos, since his parents were not fond of him spending time on them, and would rather him spend his time more wisely in improving his living situation. It is also unknown as if whether or not Jake remained sober these past couple of years, and many speculate that he may have gone back to drinking as a result of this rough patch he was going through when we last saw him. 
This is not an unrealistic fate to suggest, considering that Jake himself mentioned several times before that, although he has kept up sobriety for a long time, he was never sure if it was certain, and that he could go back to alcohol at the drop of a hat. A channel by the name of Jake's Asylum, created in June of 2016, would make videos about Jake, usually poking fun at him and criticizing him for things he would do or mistakes he would make. Most notably, the deal that he completely turned off regarding an appearance on Tosh.0, where he was offered a chance to be on the show, as well as an offering of a couple of hundred dollars. But Jake would haggle with the producers, until finally, the contact between them was broken due to Jake's unreasonable demands. Some of the comments on Jake Asylum's videos would also point to the likelihood and even guarantee that the reason for Jake's disappearance is that his parents threatened to cut him off from rent money that they gave him if he didn't stop making videos and went out to look for employment. Another channel dedicated to Jake was one by the name of To The Drink which is one that would also poke fun at Jake and even mock him and his former alcoholic lifestyle. Two videos titled Here I Am and To The Bottom would show a hooded figure drinking Jake's favorite beer, Heineken, while messages would appear on the screen tempting the viewer to drink alcohol and that the alcohol was nothing but a positive thing to consume. Whatever the situation may be, it is clear that Jake has left behind thousands of curious and worried fans without notice, and to this day, many of these fans still linger around in hopes that Jake returns alive and well with an update on his life. As of 2020, it'll be three years since we've last heard of Jake, and possibly ten years of sobriety if he has kept away from the bottle. Many have hopes that he's out there continuing to pursue his dreams and doing well for himself, but his fate may be something that will forever remain shrouded in mystery. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have, Have a wonderful, wonderful day. day. I like you